Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, I'm Bill. We're going to be in the Masters of the Wild book for this video. Um, we're continuing the Prestige class videos. The Prestige class we'll be looking at for this video is the Shifter. I'll read a little bit about what the Shifter is, a paragraph or two out of the big uh, world description of them. Then I'll go over what the requirements are. I'll tell you if you should make any changes if you want to use this for a Pathfinder. This is a third edition D&D prestige class, so there are a few edits that need to definitely be made to make the requirements appropriate. And then as we go over the ability, strength of the abilities that the class gets and what it gets, we can determine if there's any changes that feel right to make it powerful enough to be a Pathfinder prestige class. So the shifter. The shifter has no form that she calls her own. Instead, she clothes herself in whatever shape is most expedient at the time, while others base their identities largely on their external forms. The shifter actually comes closer to her true self through all her transformations. Of necessity, her sense of self is based on her outward form, but on but on her soul, which is truly the only constant about her. It is the inner strength of that soul that enables her to take on any shape and remain herself within. At first, the shifter can risk only humanoid forms and familiar animal shapes. As she grows more comfortable with her own true shapelessness, however, she can assume more outlandish forms. Eventually, she knows herself so well that she feels just as comfortable in the shape of a completely different creature type as she does in her own. At that point, her past, even her race, becomes irrelevant since external form no longer matters to her. So the requirements to become a shifter, you have to have the feats alertness and endurance. You have to be able to cast third level spells. And this is a special requirement listed here. You have to have alternate form, uh, either known Either you know polymorph self or have a natural alternate form, alter self, polymorph self, shape change, or wild shape ability. So this prestige class is definitely very applicable to uh, druids and then anyone that can shape shift. Um, the hit dice of this prestige class as you level in it is a D8 and it's only a 10 level prestige class so you'll get 10 D8 added to your character by the time you progress all the way through. Uh, the class skills, uh, animal empathy, climb, concentrate, craft, diplomacy, disguise, handle animal, hide, knowledge nature, listen, spot, swim, wilderness lore. You get four plus your intelligence modifier for skill points. Now let's go back and reverse engineer some of these skills for uh, Pathfinder. Concentration is built into the spellcasting classes, so I just say your level and shifter is your extra bonus in concentration to add it to your previous spellcasting class. Um, animal empathy, I don't believe is a class skill anymore, or a skill anymore, but I could be wrong. I know that hide and move silently, even though move silently isn't on the list. Hide is a uh, is part of stealth now. Uh, listen and spot are perception now, so it's one skill instead of two. And then wilderness lore is called survival now. Now, as you level into this prestige glass for the first time, your weapon and armor proficiencies do not change. You don't gain any new weapon and armor proficiencies for this prestige glass. Now let's look at the table, see what you get attack bonus wise, save wise, and then see what abilities you get by level, and then we'll read further into those abilities. Your base attack bonus is the second best base attack bonus in the game. So you can look up Cleric and Rogue. Their base attack progression is the base attack progression of this uh, prestige class. At first level, it's a plus zero. By the time you make it to 10th level, it is a plus seven and that stacks with your base attack bonus from your previous class. So anytime you would reach the point where you could get two attacks because of that attack bonus total, then you get two attacks. 
The fortitude save and reflex save are the best saves for this class. So you could look at any class, any class at first level that starts with a plus two bonus in the save, that's the progression of these saves. Uh, at first level, it's plus two to fort and reflex. By the time you make it to 10th level, you'll have a plus seven to fort and reflex. The will save of this prestige class is your worst save. It starts at a plus zero at first level. So any core class that has a plus zero in a uh, saving throw, it follows that progression for this prestige class. By the time you make it to 10th level, you only have a plus three and will save. And those save bonuses stack with your existing save bonuses. At first level, you get a uh, greater wild shape once per day. You, and you can, this is in parentheses, small or medium sized humanoid shape. At second level, you get greater wild shape, animal shape, and monstrous humanoid shape. At third level, you get greater wild shape three per day. Large or tiny, bee shape, plant shape. Okay, this is the one thing I'm definitely gonna change of the prestige class. Looking at it now, every other level, the amount of days you can wild shape is increased by two and it's only shown on the odd levels. So instead of that, I'd say you get greater wild shape once per day per level in the prestige class. So that way on the levels it's not mentioned, it's still going up and it's not that big of a deal to go from three to four times per day. So we're on fourth level, greater wild shape, giant shape, vermin shape. At fifth level, greater wild shape, five per day. Uh, diminutive and magical beast shape. At sixth level, greater wild shape, aberration shape, and ooze shape. And supernatural ease. At seventh level, greater wild shape, seven per day. So like I said, just every level, the wild shape is equal to the level and how many times per day you can use it. You can do a huge dragon shape. Or you can do huge and dragon shape. Uh, eighth level, you get undead shape and construct shapes. At ninth level, you get fire, fine, and then elemental shape and outsider shape. And at 10th level, you get gargantuan and ever shifting form. So let's read further into what these abilities do. Greater Wild Shape. At the beginning of first level, the shifter can take the form of another creature. Greater, greater Wild Shape works like Wild Shape with the following exceptions. As she raises in level, the shifter gains the ability to assume the forms of creatures with types other than animal. Though she cannot choose a form that normally has more hit dice than she herself does. She can designate at the time of the change which pieces of her equipment meld into her new form and which do not. Non-melded equipment alters its size to match that of her new form, but retains its functionality. The shifter cannot, however, use any equipment unless she has either an appropriate appendage or a magical means of compensating for the lack of one. Any piece of equipment that is separated from her reverts to its original form. At first level, the shifter is limited to humanoid forms of the small and medium size. Thereafter, she can use greater wild shape two more times per day for every two shifter levels gained. So like I said, I just use, just use the level four times per day. And her range of available creature sizes and types increase as shown on table 515, which was what I just read out. When she gains the ability to adopt an undead shape at eighth level, she may become incorporeal if she chooses the form of a creature with that subtype. So she could become ghosts and go through objects. That makes that a lot more powerful than I thought. That is cool. If the shifter already has the wild shape ability from another class, she may convert her uses of day of wild shape to use per day with greater wild shape as a one-for-one -one basis. She may also mix and match the benefits of the two abilities as desired to gain the maximum advantage for any daily use. 
Thus a druid of 8th level, Shifter of 1, has up to 4 uses per day of greater wild shape, and she could use the ability to become a large humanoid. Because an 8th level druid can become a large creature, and a 1st level Shifter can adopt the form of humanoid. In the same manner, a druid of 8th level and a Shifter of 2nd level could become a large monstrous humanoid if she wishes. That's very cool. That makes being a druid into this uh, prestige class very advantageous. The only downside to the prestige class so far is you don't gain any spell levels uh, or any caster levels associated with this prestige class it, coming into it as a spellcaster. So your if you take all 10 levels of this, you'll be 10 levels weaker when it comes to magic you can use. But what makes up for it is what you can turn into. Supernatural Ease. At 6th level, the character's greater wild shape ability becomes a supernatural rather than spell-like. It still requires a standard action and can be suppressed in an anti-magic field, but it, it, its use no longer provokes attacks of opportunity and never requires a concentration check. So that's cool. So beforehand, it might require a concentration check, especially if somebody attacks you while you're transformed. And then ever shifting form at 10th level, the shifter has reached the pinnacle of her shape shifting abilities. From this point on, she can use greater wild shape once per round as a move equivalent action as many times per day as she wishes. So this is where the times per day would just disappear. Her type changes to shape changer for determining what effects and items can affect her. And she gains dark vision 60 feet which remains in effect regardless of her form. That's cool. Now, if you were a race that had dark vision, I'd just say your dark vision increases by 30 feet. That way you gained a bonus from it anyways. In addition, the shifter no longer suffers ability penalties for aging and is not subject to magical aging, though any Aging penalties she may already have suffered remain in place. Bonuses still occur for age, and the shifter still dies of old age when her time is up. You just don't suffer the penalties anymore. So that's pretty cool. Uh, this is the shifter prestige class. Like I said, I would change the wild shape per days to equal to the level, and it stacks with the druid wild shape, so you could essentially have a good amount of wild shape uh, per day mixed together. The downside of this prestige class is you don't gain any new spell levels and spell caster levels. So whatever spell caster level you are when you enter this prestige class is the caster level you remain while you gain all the levels of this prestige class. So by the time you're 20th level, you'd be 10 levels in your spell casting class and 10 levels in this. So you would have access to I think fifth level spells, and that would be it. So weigh that with taking all the levels of the prestige class. That said, this prestige class seems very fun, so it's well worth it. It's just weigh that if you're thinking your spellcaster is going to be awesome and then you want to jump into this all of a sudden without considering that. Let me know what you think about the shifter prestige class in the comments below. If you're thinking about playing the shifter, share this with your game master and fellow players. Let them enjoy this prestige class. Check out my other prestige class videos uh, until we all game again, guys.